high gain. In this video, I'll show you the real video on how to do regression. In the previous two videos, I've shown you, I've told you that before we do regression analysis, we need to do scatter plot analysis and we need to do correlation analysis. And we have done both, and results from both analysis give us some visual evidence and some co correlation coefficient R. 0.714 which says that the two variables which is the digital training as the independent variable has a strong relationship with uh, the digital skills as the dependent variable so how to do the correlation analysis so again we are interested in to see whether this digital training has any relationship with the digital skills actually if your sample size is so small uh, let's say you have only a sample size of five people Right, that one, two, three, four, five, and you don't have anything else. It's so easy to, 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 to visualize, to see if the bigger the digital training, whether the bigger the digital skills will be, right? So you can, you can, you can, you can see that. But when you have a, a much larger observation, so you have a few hundreds or a few thousands or tens of thousands of participants in your survey or in your experiment, then. We cannot rely on human uh, visual to, to, to check some patterns. So that's why we need to use algorithms. We need to use software to do it. So how you do the regression? Very simple. Go to analyze regression linear. So this is called linear regressions. So again, we know that our uh, dependent variable is the digital training here. And our in the, uh, dependent variable, which means that which dependent variable is the digital literacy skills. Dependent variable means it depends on something, right? Independent variable means nothing else is causing this. So independent variable is the one that is always used to predict the dependent variable, right? So I put both there. I go to statistics. Um, well, I just make it things simple, just estimates and model. You can click others if you want. Uh, it doesn't hurt you. Um, do I want any plots? I don't want any plots. Um, I don't want anything else. Yep. And I'm using the anti method because there are many different types of method to do regression. Uh, uh, step stepwise, for example, it is useful if you have multiple variables and you want to enter your independent variable one by one in the model. So you may have different models in the output of the regression. But here we just use a very simple called enter model. That's it. I go to paste. I range it, click run. So these are here my main output. So first, this here tells me that I use the enter method to do my regression analysis. Model summary, model summary is giving us um, an indication of um, to what extent is the variation of the dependent variable is explained by the independent variable. In simple language, based on this example, to what extent is the variation of the digital skills, yeah, the data points on the digital skills, is can be explained by the data on the digital training, right? So here it shows that our R square is actually 0 0.5, which is quite high. And I've shown you in the PowerPoint of today's uh, lecture, uh, which we're going to do the live lecture today, that R square is actually R square, right? Well, that's going to R square. So this value you multiply by the same value. So zero point seven one four. I'm using a calculator here. Uh, I multiply with zero point seven one four. So I I multiply uh, that same number zero point seven one four, which is the coefficient correlation, the, sa the same number as the coefficient correlation R from the correlation analysis. And if you if you if you do that, it will give you that number, right? Zero point five one. A bit rounding up. So that zero five one tells us um, uh, to what extent is the variation of your dependent variable is can be explained by your independent variable. So this tells us that um, the digital training can explain uh, more than half of the variation in the dependent variable. Which which means what? Which is pretty good, right? So for example. If I only know you, I only met you once. If I if I met you once, and I know very little of you, maybe I can explain two percent or one percent about you, about who you are. But if I've been your friends 
um, a lot, I hang around with you a lot, I know you very well for a few years, then I may, I may be able to explain more about you. So you can think of it in this sense, in a very simple sense. So, so, so that means if I know a lot about you, that means the that R square is, uh, is a lot higher, it's a lot bigger, maybe closer to one. But if I know very little about you, I can explain very little about who you are and what you like, what you don't. Maybe the R square of my knowledge about you is very low. Right? So typically, of course, if you use only one variable as your independent variable, you have a certain R square. But as you have more and more independent variable in your analysis, definitely your R square will go up. As simple as, as simple as. Um, I only know about what you like. Maybe if I only know what you like, I have an R square of about you. My understanding about you is only like zero, let's say ten uh, percent or zero point one. But if I know about what you like, but I also know what you don't like. I know about who your friends are. I know about what your friends like or like or not like because we know our friends somehow will influence our choices, our behavior. Then I have four variables now, right? What you like, what you don't like, uh, who you who you hang out with, and um, uh, what are the behavior of your friends, what your friends like or don't like, then I'll be able to predict what you like. And actually, this is the logic that is used in a lot of um, e-commerce websites. For example, if you want to buy something in Amazon or Taobao or whatever, all of these are using artificial intelligence. And this artificial intelligence is using a very simple predictive modeling. One of them is using regression analysis. So I, I will not talk too much about that. So this is just a very quick summary about what is a model, what, what is a, this R square. The second output you want to check in your regression analysis is the ANOVA, right? Now, ANOVA is about model fit. It tells us whether our uh, model, our data uh, uh, fit with the model, right? Or to what extent is our uh, regression results can explain what happened with the data. So what what is what it is model fit? This ANOVA is saying typically you want to have f value of at least one. If f is less than one, typically you have trouble. So his f is very big, twenty three. And the most important part is this significant value. So again, for everything you need to look at the p value or the significant values. Here it shows that um, the significant significant values is quite high. And the beauty of this table is it tells us this is the dependent variable, which is the digital score, uh, digital skills score, and our predictor, our dependent variable, which is uh, the number of times people join the digital training. So here it shows the, the independent and the dependent variable, and it tells us the model fit is good. So we are fine. And this is, uh, I'll have no time to explain what is the uh, degrees of freedom, DF degrees of freedom, Residual and this is the, the total observation. So you have 24 respondents. This is what it shows But the most important part in regress analysis is this part. So using this table it allows us to construct a simple regression uh, Equation so the most important part of this table is look at which one is significant is a constant significant is your um, um, Beta value We can use that on standardized or standardized uh, whether they're significant or not. So remember our independent variable, which is your program intervention, is the digital training. And uh, because we have only one variable here in this analysis, which is the digital training, and we want to see whether the digital training here uh, will predict uh, the dependent variable, which is the digital skills, right? So sh here we have the value of 5.44, right? And it's highly significant. Uh, actually, another indicator to look at is also to look at the t value. It should be two point three something, but you know, don't don't worry about that. Just look at the unstandardized coefficient, beta coefficient, and the p value here. So it's significant and it's five point four four one, and the constant is forty. So I provided in the interpretation of this. So in the in the uh, word file of this tutorial. So what it is saying is. In, in based on this analysis of just using one independent variable and uh, the dependent variable, it, it tells that um, if you provide no 
digital training at all, i.e., if digital training is zero, right, you will get, on average, the elderly participants will have a score of 40.22 in their digital exam score, digital skills exam score, which is actually not too bad, right? So it means that they have some digital literacy skills, right? some digital skills. Uh, but for every unit of increase of uh, digital training, it will increase the score, the digital skill score of the elderly by 5.44. And if you remember, go back to the code book of how we measure <coughs> and define and measure the digital training. We define it by the number of times, right? So one times, two times, five times, seven times, ten times. So it's, it shows that here, for every unit, and every unit is one time, for every one time or one session of digital training that we provide, to this elderly, it will improve the score, the digital skill score of the elderly by 5.4. 5.44. So what, how good is this? Um, we don't know at this stage until we have compared this with the, the analysis on other variables. And I'm going to show you quickly uh, in a moment in the next video of what if you use another variable such as uh, uh, providing inspirational talks to the elderly. So you have inspirational talks is defined here is you get some other elderly who have joined similar program to go to the stage and talk to a large of audience of other elderly who have not joined the, uh, the your program, your intervention program for the digital literacy for the elderly. And hope you're, you're hoping that this inspirational talk will influence or help boost up the digital skill score of uh, the elderly participants. So this is how you do the uh, regression uh, analysis and how you interpret the results. For a, a written version of the how, how to write the summary of this um, uh, regression analysis is available in the tutorial word file. In the word file tutorial is called regression tutorial in the in today's uh, folder week 7 uh, in the called main data tutorial for regression analysis. That's it for this session. Thank you. Bye.